Welcome to another episode of The F Word, where we have weekly discussions about what's going on in the world and maybe just some interesting facts. So, welcome, Ruben. Thank you. So, so I'm going to start with, on my side just with a presentation or a screen. And what I'm talking about is the thing that we always say is about time in the market and not timing the market. Okay. So this is an interesting graph that we have. It's the S&P 500, and then we start with the S&P 500, and we exclude the best 10 days, and then they exclude the best 20 days, and they exclude the best 30 days. And this is over a period of 20 years, from 2000. And there you can see the big difference it makes when you exclude those winning days. And that's why everyone says we must time the market. You, when the market goes up, I want to be in the market, but when before it goes down, I want to be out of the market. But that's the most difficult thing is to time the market, and this is what we can see why. Because if you miss only the 10 best days, you can see it's almost you take away 200% of the growth that you would have been if you just stayed in the market. Even if we see on those COVID where it was a big pullback, you can see the upside that you had. And most of the times, those best days, those best 10 days is after a big correction. And that's the thing that no one of us knows what's going to happen. And we can just take, for example, the last two years. Um, I think in 2022, the market crashed, in, especially in the U.S. and bonds as well. And we expected that to be a big recession. And even going into 2023 and 2024. But in 2023, the market in the U.S. rebounded because the recession was not so bad as everyone expected. And you can see that big rebound after 2022 that it crashed and a big rebound in 2023. And most economists would have agreed we are going in a U.S. recession and that's what's going to happen. So that's the thing. And then if the market, the big asset managers can't get it right and the biggest economists in the world can't get it right, how can retail investors like ourselves or we are as a financial advisor can get right? So that's why everyone says it's about time in the market, not timing the market. Because most of the time, you will get it wrong. Ruvan? Yeah, thank you, PJ. Um, about a week or two, I made a, I made a post on, on LinkedIn um, with a similar chart um, with, two, with two main points. The first point being um diversify and the second point being you're too late um when 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 you think you are buying in when you've seen that the market you know speaks about nvidia or you know speaks about amazon or apple or, or whoever it might be um you're probably too late um so so instead of you know trying to exactly like you said instead of trying to time the market just stay in the market, always be in the market and, 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 and always, um, always invest on a, definitely on a regular basis it's every month if, 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 if it's possible. PJ? Yeah, that, that's exactly my point that I want to say. It's average over every month. And when the market goes down, you are happy because your monthly contribution this month, you're buying a special. Because they say the only thing is that market is the only place, financial markets, where prices go down that people want to sell. When there's a sale at Willys and it's 25% down, you want to buy extra. So that's just interesting. Buy high and sell low. Um, so let's go to mine. So, uh, PJ, I'm, I'm, I'm just quickly going into what happens if um, if you don't have a will and, and you pass away. Um, you know, there's there's many things that, that may happen, but if, if um, there's, there's one you know specific point that that i can that i can touch um you know let's let's just start at a point so individuals aged 16 and above um can create a will um now why do you want to create a will is to specify the distribution um of your estate upon your death and of course that includes your your last wishes as well um now you know there are specific requirements that a will must comply to um and, and it's regulated by the wills act 7 of 1953 so the first requirement is that you should be uh, at least 16 years old. 
um, and then your will must be in writing, either in lit, you know, literal, you know, handwriting or typed. Um, and then each page of the will, including the last page, must be signed by the testator or testatrix. Um, the will must also be signed by two competent witnesses. Um, so, so also, you know, a person will qualify uh, to be a competent witness if he or she is above the age of 14. Um, of course, also, um, you know, if, if you're able to make your, your own decisions, that also um, means that you're, you are competent. Um, now, what happens if, if you don't have a will um, on, on your death? What would then need to happen is after your, your, you, you know, there's a, there's a death certificate, um, then, then your, your, you obviously won't have an executor. Um, so the master will sort of uh, need to start sorting out what, what will happen to, to your estate. Now, what they then call it is um, interstate succession. So the Interstate Succession Act 81 of 1987. Um, now, what happens um, with Inter Interstate 19, uh, Act uh, 1981 of 1987? Um, now, it will be distributed in terms of, of the Act. Now, what does that mean? Now, this means that the beneficiaries um, will have pe preference. Certain beneficiaries will have uh, preference. Um, so the first one is the spouse of the deceased. That's number one. Then if there is no spouse, then the descendants of the, sp of, of the deceased. If there are no descendants, then you start moving on. So I'm going to go point by point. So the parents of the deceased. Um, now, once again, only if the deceased died without a surviving spouse or descendants as above. Um, the siblings of the deceased. Um, only if one or both parents are deceased. So, so there's, there's quite a few moving parts here. Um, when the deceased left only a spouse and no descendants, the wives will inherit the estate in equal shares. So that's also in terms of customary, customary marriages, um, we are able to have more than, than more than one wife. Um, when the deceased left, uh, left the spouses and descendants, the spouses and the descendants will inherit the estate in equal shares. But each wife should inherit at least 250,000 rand. Okay, so um, it can be left to the spouses and the descendants, but each wife should should have or should inherit at least 250,000 rand. Um, of course, this is with customary marriages again. Um, but when the estate is not large enough uh, to allow for every uh, wife to earn 250,000 rand, the spouses will inherit the estate in equal shares, while the descendants will not receive anything. So, so yes, there are, there are, there are many moving parts here. Um, and, you know, this would maybe not go according to your, um, how can I say, to your last wishes. Um, and, and, you know, people will inherit uh, assets that you maybe wouldn't would have wanted to, to earn assets. And, of course, there are many other moving parts uh, where will would have helped um, something like a testamentary trust um, would, would also be uh, one of those moving parts that, that, that your will can set up. Um, so there's many, many moving parts that would, it, it would be quite difficult if you, if you don't have, if you don't have a will. Um, and of course, many young people always ask me this question, do they need a will? Now, firstly, let's go back. Do you want your will to be dissolved according to the Interstate Succession Act? Probably not because you want your own wishes, um, to, to be upheld. Um, PJ, anything that, that you want to add there? Yeah, well, definitely. And I will definitely say you want the will, and not just in telling who is a beneficiary, but who's going to administer this. Because let's, if you, the master's office at base of times is not functional. <laughs> to put it, um, now you're putting, how long is it going to take the master, even if you are only got a few thousand rand, now you're putting it in the master's hand. So you're making a nightmare for the people stay uh, left behind. So you're not giving them anything. You're giving them headaches afterwards. So I will definitely, just from a non-selfish point of view, appoint an executor, even if it's your sister or someone, just to get you in the right direction. And with children, like you said, um, it's, if you have minor children, you would want, if you don't have a trust, Put up a testamentary trust because now in the state, if it goes to the children's, then the money is going to go to a guardian fund and in, with the government and to get the money out from the guardian fund, 
personal experience from that. I had to drive to Peter Maritzburg to get a few money for that my grand grandma left me. So it's just an administrative nightmare. So appoint the beneficiaries that you want and the people who's going to administer for you, that for you. So I think that's why you need a will. Absolutely. Um, having an executor um, with your last will and testament will definitely make the winding up of the estate a lot more timely. Um, it will definitely uh, 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 sort of be handled easily and, and, and quickly and beneficiaries will probably get their share, um, if you want to be that blunt, get their share out of your estate quite a bit quicker than, than having to wait for, for the master. Um, PJ, uh, life insurance and, and, and your estate? Yeah, so I think that's another important thing to remember is that your life insurance or retirement and use pension funds, you can nominate beneficiaries. And that's also important to do because the beneficiary nominations, um, you look first at that and then at the um, will. So even if you, let's say you don't have a will, the interstate succession will apply but not if you have beneficiaries nominated. Then they will, according to the beneficiaries nominations, will go according to that, and then they will look at your will, and if you don't have a will, interstate. So definitely, if you're a young person, definitely nominate beneficiaries and change it. So like I said, you now you're single the one year, you are uh, engaged or married the next year, then you might divorce or you have minor children, so definitely update that as well. But thanks, Ruvan. I think that's all from our side and we'll see you again next week.